Hopefully, I will like to see if uh, everything is working well, and you can sh uh, see my screen. Sure. Is this yeah. okay, Jeanette? Yes. Okay, thank you. Well, many thanks for your kind introduction, and many thanks to the organizer for inviting me and giving me the possibility to introduce this topic. This is a topic where we have been working more than 10 years from now, and a very new topic about high-frequency ventilation. So, uh, first of all, I would like to, to review some of the data that uh, previously uh, Dr. Andrew Mangan uh, has uh, uh, reviewed about the possibility of using high-frequency ventilation from the beginning to decrease the um, damage to the immature lung. Uh, when he was uh, uh, reviewing the topic, he reviewed and introduced this uh, uh, Cochrane review done by my good friend, Philip Kultz, some years ago. Um, with this uh, uh, Cochrane review, with this meta-analysis, um, uh, the evidence about the possibility that using from the very beginning high frequency instead of conventional ventilation to treat very immature babies, decreasing um, BPD or improving uh, survival of the babies was not proven. But uh, uh, he said there was two big trials, the Corny trial done in the United States and at the same time, the UK trial. The two trials were different. In the first trial, as uh, Dr. Um, Anton Van Kamp said, um, babies were doing much better with the high frequency ventilation. And in the UK trial, babies were doing exactly the same compared the two strategies, conventional to high frequency ventilation. But look, the two trials were done in 2002. So more than 20 years ago were devices were absolutely different compared than today. Devices were not clearly uh, developed for immature babies or premature babies. So devices were producing a very large tidal volume during high frequency ventilation. And probably those devices were not um, well controlling this large tidal volume produced during high frequency ventilation. One of the good things is that the investigators of the UK trial, they followed the babies who were included in the study after 14 years. And they found something very important for us. They saw that babies in the group of high frequency ventilation compared to those in the conventional were doing better after 14 years in terms of the pulmonary function test. So this gave to us in our group the idea that something was not very clearly uh, related to the benefits or not at the very beginning, but in the follow-up of the babies. Babies on the high-frequency ventilation were doing better, giving to us the idea that probably the high-frequency ventilator were uh, probably producing less uh, damage into the baby's lung. Well, in this trial, in the UK trial, unfortunately, today we don't have this um, hard copy table that was published only in the internet, but there was this very important table for me that uh, when babies were compared, depending on the type of the ventilator used in this UK trial, they saw that when they were using this very potent ventilator sensor medics, babies were doing worse in terms of higher risk of uh, dying or developing chronic lung disease compared to those other babies who were using this other ventilator. Which is the main difference between the two? Well, by those years, 20 years ago, the most important difference was that the power for the ventilator was lower with the drier one, and the tidal volumes that were was produced during high frequency ventilation by this ventilator was smaller. So we uh, kept this in our mind and we began to think the possibility that probably there was some hidden effect of um, high frequency not seen before producing this uh, damage into the lungs. And because we were working many years uh, with uh, the volume guarantee modality during conventional ventilation, one 
this uh, modality appears combined to the high frequency ventilation, we began to think that probably we could use this new modality to prevent the develop of very large tidal volume during high frequency ventilation. For those who are not familiarized with the volume guarantee strategy, this strategy has been demonstrated for more than 30 years that it's a very safe strategy decreasing um, the damage into the lung of the, venti of the ventilated babies because you are you, you said you are sending a very well controlled tidal volume every cycle. What is the ventilator doing? The ventilator is working in a continuous flow with pressure regulated uh, control. And the ventilator moves the pressure up or down the peak expiratory pressure to shed exactly a very similar tidal volume that you're setting to the ventilator. So what the ventilator is doing is decrease the variability of the tidal volume cycle by cycle, and it's adapting to the lung compliance situation of the baby's lung to send exactly the tidal volume that you are setting. With this philosophy in mind, then the high frequency ventilator can work also with this uh, strategy of volume guarantee. Well, the ventilator is set to send a very close to the setting tidal volume produced during high frequency by going up or down in the amplitude of the ventilator. So you don't have to move the amplitude of the ventilator. The only thing you have to do is to set the frequency number one, mean over pressure number two, and then the tidal volume directly to put exactly uh, the length of the baby in the situation where you want to be during high frequency. Then the ventilator, what it's doing is to modify the amplitude cycle by cycle to set exactly the tidal volume that you want. So here you have in our lab two um, different um, colors of uh, how the tidal volume uh, is produced depending on the frequency and the tidal volume. So with a classic ventilator without the volume guarantee modality, you have to remember when you increase the frequency of the ventilator in hertz, then the ventilator decreases the tidal volume because the timing to send the tidal volume is lower and this tidal volume is lower. So this is why when for many years you wanted to increase the CO2 was out, you used to decrease the frequency of your high frequency ventilator because then you have this increase in the tidal volume and this increase in the tidal volume is going to produce this increased amount of CO2 was out. So this is the very first study published in 2013, 10 years ago in our animal lab where we test the hypothesis that using this high frequency volume guarantee modality, you can set directly the tidal volume to modify the CO2, the PCO2 in, in the patient, or in this case, in an animal. Well, this study was done in an animal neonatal model piglets, one to two days of age in the standard physiological condition and after, Decreasing the compliance of the uh, of the lung by uh, taking out all the, of the surfactant by bronchial water lavage with uh, saline. So in this situation, you can see this is the PCO2 of the normal lung situation. Um, this animal was ventilated on high frequency at a constant rate of 10 hertz, and then we increased the tidal volume from 2 to 2.5 and 3. ML per kilogram of body weight, and you can see how the PCO2 decreases automatically in a very similar way. So then we put the uh, situation of the animal lung in the low compliance by taking out the surfactant by this bronchial velar lavage, and you can see how the ventilator kept the PCO2 in the same condition as before, keeping this uh, tidal volume set at three ml by kilogram of body weight. So this is the very first study published with this uh, um, 
a new modality of high frequency demonstrated that today we can directly set the pedal volume instead of modifying delta P, and it was done before to control the PCO2. So what is the ventilator doing with this uh, in this strategy? As you can see here, this is the same study. Anytime you increase the tidal volume, this is amplitude of the ventilator. The ventilator is increasing the amplitude to reach the tidal volume that you are setting. And this is the before and after. The ventilator, what it's doing is to modify delta P to keep exactly the same tidal volume, volume that you are setting by the ventilator. Well, um, more uh, studies were done trying to demonstrate the benefits or the efficacy of this new strategy. And this other trial that we published uh, one year after, we uh, produced this um, uh, uh, testing lung with uh, uh, different uh, strategy. Instead of using live animals, we uh, produced this continuous TU2 into the testing lung. We analyzed by a computer the power of the ventilator clearing this CO2. And we wanted to know exactly what was happening with uh, uh, Delta P proximal right in the middle and inside it, the testing lung to know if this pressure was or not transmitted into the lung of a baby. Well, with this um, <clears throat> uh, testing lung, with this uh, experiment, we demonstrated again that every time you modify the frequency when you're using the uh, new strategy. This is the uh, dark uh, point volume guarantee modality. You can see how the effect on this CO2, what is the way that we control and to we analyze how much CO2 is uh, uh, taken out from, from the uh, lung. You can see how Anytime you keep the tidal volume fixed, if you modify then the frequency, because the tidal volume is fixed, then the effect on this U2 is higher. And remember that without the volume guarantee strategy with the standard ventilator or high frequency, when you increase the frequency, then the effectivity of the ventilator to produce this uh, clearance in the CO2 decreases. So for the very first time, we demonstrated that now you fix the tidal volume, you can go up and down with the frequency and you're going to wash out exactly in the same way as in conventional ventilation, the CO2. But important for us was to know what was happening in the pressures. Built to be in proximal, right in the, in the tracheal tube or inside the testing line and in three different colors, you can see the proximal. This is in, in the white color, the green one is uh, around the, in the tracheal tube and the, this uh, purple color is inside the line. And as you can see, you fix the tidal volume but you increase the frequency from five until 10 and then 20, the proximal pressure increases, delta P increases to maintain the tidal volume, but this pressure is not transmitted into the lung of this, this testing lung. So this demonstrated that this strategy is very safe in terms that you can modify delta P, but delta P is dumped and it's not transmitted into the lung of, uh, of the baby or the animal. And you can see in different colors now, the blue color represents the proximal pressure and this other color represents inside the lung when you are using this volume guarantee strategy and you increase the frequency, you have only this increase in the proximal pressure, but this pressure is not transmitted into the lung. Without this modality, using the standard high frequency ventilation, anytime you modify the frequency, the pressure drops very fast. And this is why during many years, many ventilators were set in with low frequencies. Because when you go very high in the frequencies, higher than 15, most of the ventilator will drop the pressure into the lung of the baby. And um, probably this is why for many years, the uh, setting in the high frequency ventilator was around or between 10 and 15. Well, we wanted to test uh, an, a new hypothesis. We were thinking now, if we know that the tidal volume really represents one of the most important 
um, etiology of the ventilator-induced lung trauma, then if we could use very, very low tidal volume, but compensating the ventilation increasing very high the frequency, then we probably can decrease the damage into the lung using this new strategy. So this was the uh, very first study that we did and published in 2019, um, comparing two randomized strategies in our animal model with a surfactant and in a low uh, compliance situation, we compare two strategies, the standard 10 Hertz with normal standard tidal volume and high frequency ventilation during 12 hours. Compare with another group of animals where in a randomized uh, mode, we use 20 Hertz with very low tidal volumes. Exactly the same CO2 in both of the animals, exactly the same mineral pressure but tidal volumes were very low in this 20 Hertz uh, group of animals. So after 12 hours, we analyzed the effect on the histology of the lung, and we could see that in the group of animals where the 10 Hertz with the standard tidal volume of high frequency uh, was used, the lung histology represents a very high damage of the uh, ventilator producing inflammation and rupture of the uh, air spaces of the, of the lung. But in the group of animals where the 20 Hertz strategy was used with the very low tidal volumes, the histology of the lung was uh, spur. Uh, lungs were very well in terms of uh, not very high inflammation, not rupture, of the, uh, of the lung spaces. And if we apply a score and compare with another uh, group of uh, animals where the conventional ventilation was used at the same time, using this score, the higher is the score, the higher is the damage into the lungs. You can see how the group of animals with the higher frequency and lower tidal volumes did have a very low score lung damage. So in this study, we demonstrated that using this very low tidal volume with very high frequency, you can decrease the damage into the lung. So I must remember you that today we can control this tidal volume and we can increase the frequency as much as we want to keep the tidal volume in very low numbers to prevent lung damage into our very immature babies. But can this strategy be applied in premature babies? Well, what we did, and this is the very first study using this strategy in very mature babies that we published in 2016, what we did is to um, did this uh, feasibility study to know if babies could be ventilated with this very high frequency strategy with very low tidal volumes. What we did, and you can see some of the babies were less than 1,000 grams. We uh, put the babies on this high frequency when babies was, uh, were having this very severe respiratory distress syndrome in the standard standard uh, high frequency ventilation around 10 Hertz with the standard tidal volume. So after stabilization, then we moved the ventilator to decrease the tidal volume as much as possible. And you can see we go, uh, uh, this is the mean 1.4 of uh, ml per kilogram of body weight, and we increase the frequency very high to compensate the PCO2. And you can see that using this strategy, babies were doing well. FIO2 was exactly uh, the same, very similar. But look at this. This CO2 was uh, the, 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 the way to analyze high, how the ventilator is uh, uh, was in the CO2 uh, decreases. And delta P was not statistically significantly higher than before. So the strategy could be used. And even more, babies were doing better in terms that improve their oxygenation and improve the PCO2. So with this in mind, after this feasibility, we began to use this strategy uh, some years ago and we very recently published this uh, effect. And we analyzed um, 
the group of babies where we were using this strategy. Normally, we use uh, this strategy in all of the babies who are now on high frequency ventilation, but the very high frequency and very low tidal volume is mostly used. In those babies, less than 26 weeks gestation. As you can see here, more of the babies, most of the babies were uh, below 25 weeks uh, gestation. And you can see the characteristics of uh, the babies depending on the frequency that we were using. Uh, babies in the higher rate of frequency around 20 Hertz were mostly babies around 500 grams. So the smaller and 24 weeks gestation, the smaller is the baby, the higher the frequency that we could use, decreasing the tidal volume as much as possible. And as you can see, we switched to the high frequency strategy very early. When the babies were sick enough to need a, a conventional ventilation, I will show you uh, thereafter, um, how we uh, implement the strategy, we switch to high frequency very early as the beginning, as Dr. Antoman can say, we wanted to protect the lung before uh, the conventional ventilation is producing these damages. Which is the frequency, uh, which is the relationship between the frequency and the tidal volume. You can see here with the higher frequency, the lower tidal volume was used. And with the lower frequency around 13, you have uh, higher tidal volume. So this depends many times on the size of the lung of the baby and the uh, dynamic condition of the lung. So if the baby is very small, you can go to very high, high frequency. The baby is bigger than the transmission of uh, the waves. As you know, high frequency is worse and you need to go with uh, lower frequencies. But look, we saw this and um, putting together the frequency and the tidal volume uh, relationship, you can see this very funny curve. So the higher is the frequency, the lower is the tidal volume that you can use. So this means that when you go up to around 16, 17, 18, 19, or 20, the efficacy of this very high rate is much higher than than when you are in this lower frequency, close to 10. And this is because you reach the resonance frequency where the effect of the high frequency ventilation is much higher. So you, as you increase the frequency, you can even decrease even more the tidal volume because the efficacy of the ventilation is much higher. So we recently, uh, uh, analyze the effect of this strategy uh, from um, our babies, in our babies, in a study uh, before and after. Before we were using high frequency combined with the volume guarantee strategy, but without this uh, new uh, way to protect uh, the land of very high, high uh, frequencies. And the second cohort were those babies where we were doing this new strategy, where babies were very similar but we found that using this new strategy, after two years of age, babies were doing better in terms of less respiratory therapies and less admission in the hospital because of respiratory problems. So not clear uh, big benefits, but babies were doing better after two years. So we also wanted to implement with this new strategy a new way to uh, analyze how the lungs are recruited or not. So we were using for many years the same strategy of Dr. Rankin using the FIU2 and oxygenation to control how the lung is uh, well recruited. But now we see, using the high frequency combined to the volume guarantee, we um, demonstrate that Delta P can guide very well this um, lung recruitment. So we did this study, ex vivo model in, in the animal lab and thereafter in, in vivo model. And we demonstrated that anytime you increase the mineral pressure, as you can see here, Delta P modifies using the volume guarantee strategy. Without the volume guarantee, you can do this, but you can see that you uh, combine Delta with mineral pressure 
as you increase mineral pressure, there is a point where delta P do not increase, uh, decrease even more. Well, this point represents the open lung before over the station. So if you see that there is no any other decrease in delta P after increasing mineral pressure, then this area, the only thing that you are going to have is over the station. Why we wanted to test this new strategy? Because in some babies, oxygenation is not the better way to guide the recruitment. And in this in vivo uh, modeling an animal rat, we combine the two strategies, delta P and oxygenation. As you can see how anytime you increase the mineral pressure, there's an increase in the oxygenation until and a specific point where no more increase in oxygenation you will reach. And this is exactly the same point where delta P do not decrease even more. So today, what we are using is the two strategy combines together. Well, this is our criteria for using this new uh, modality, this new strategy in babies with severe respiratory failure. We first put the babies on conventional PSB plus volume guarantee, but if the baby is needed more than 15 millibar for peak uh, um, inspiratory pressure in babies less than 1,000 grams, then we switch very fast to high frequency combined with the volume guarantee modality. Of course, any air leaks in some PBA chain or pulmonary hemorrhage or some other atelectasias or pulmonary hypoplasia, those babies are on high frequency ventilation. So we, and this is my last uh, slide, we wanted to test uh, very recently uh, the effect of this new strategy and we compared two different cohorts, two different periods of using this new strategy in preemie babies less than 32 weeks gestation. And we did, we did this uh, binary logistic regression to put, you know, all confounding uh, variables. And we saw that using this new strategy, we increase survival free of BPD in the babies in a statistically significant uh, way. We also decrease the number of babies who need to be ventilated during the first three days after delivery. And this is even more important for us. Look, we decrease in a very statistically significant way the severity of the BPD of those surviving babies. So this means that probably we are in, we are in the track uh, decreasing the severity of the ventilation in these very immature babies. And this is my last uh, comment. We recently, just a few weeks ago, uh, published this uh, paper. This is an, an experimental paper where we analyze the effect of this new strategy comparing with or without the volume guarantee in an animal model, the effect of this strategy in cerebral hemodynamics. And we demonstrated that there is no uh, um, effect in terms of modifying the uh, blood perfusion or oxygenation of the brain. So this is a safe strategy, and at least we uh, found very good results in terms of decreasing uh, severity of lung damage. So thank you very much for your attention, and I will be more than happy to answer any kind of question that you have to do right now. Thank you. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Dr. Janet. Can I ask a question with your permission? Oh, yes. Dr. Janet. Oh. Yeah, please proceed, Dr. Sajjan. Yes. Yeah, th thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, excellent uh, presentation. Congratulations on that. Uh, my question is, do we have enough evidence to say that at this stage, uh, we uh, we have enough evidence to say that uh, high frequency with volume guarantee is better than conventional ventilation with volume guarantee. Well, this is a good question, but it represents that the, we have exactly the same question with or without volume guarantee. So, if you ask uh, to Dr. Antoine Ken that uh, high frequency is not better or is better than conventional ventilation? The answer is we need to do randomized controlled trials probably again with um, new ventilators using this uh, very well controlling tidal volumes. So today I must say that uh, with this strategy, at least in the animal lab, 
we found that the, the lower is the tidal volume, the better uh, for the immature lungs in terms of prevention of uh, lung damage. So my answer is um, today in our animal lab and today in our babies, more than 300 babies ventilated with this strategy. Uh, the only thing that we can say is that number one, this strategy is very safe. And number two, this strategy decreases the, the damage of the immature lung if you're using it very early. So the idea is that uh, controlling the tidal volume and decreasing the variability of the tidal volume during high frequency ventilation, you will have two advantages. Number one, you will decrease very large tidal volume that for many years, many people were using with those very old ventila ventilators that were using very large uh, tidal volumes. And number two, you will control the variation of the PCO2 that you know that can produce damage into the brain of our babies. So volume guarantee represents a real advance in conventional ventilation because as you know, there is enough evidence that this strategy decreases not only BPD and increases survival, but also decreases uh, brain hemorrhage. And uh, why not using the same strategy to the high frequency, you will prevent even more yes. uh, damage into the lung of the babies when you compare high frequency with or without volume guarantee. So um, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. So the question is that, Dr. Um, Sanchez, the in uh, high frequency, I, I use the word conventional high frequency without volume guarantee. Still, the volume is very low. It's not that much uh, volume, uh, the high frequency using. Am I right on that? Well, it's low or it's high, depending on the baby. You can use uh, half of the standard mm -hmm. tidal volume with this volume guarantee modality, and you can fix the tidal volume. So the benefits is that you can fix in these very, very low numbers, and to compensate, you can go mm -hmm. very, uh, very high in this uh, in frequency. Mm -hmm. So um, remember, um, for the people who are listening to us, that the tidal volume during high frequency normally is around or less than the dead mm -hmm. space. So Sometimes many ventilators are used in very large tidal volumes. And as you say, those ventilators, what they are doing is producing tidal ventilation at very high rate. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, very traumatic. And this is very uh, uh, producing a lot of damage into the lung of the babies. So uh, many people will clearly see that babies are improving very fast using this very large tidal volume, but at the end, yeah what you are doing is producing a lot of damage into the lung. Yeah, so my question is uh, that, let's say we are using the sensor medics, then it's a very difficult for the, those things because sometimes the, these are not, uh, fun, uh, I mean, the trigger cannot be very well uh, with the high frequency. So th that's uh, how we can, um, uh, with the sensor medics, uh, is there any strategy which we can use? Well, we um, more than 15 years ago, we sell our sensor medics. Um, we never use them again. Um, <laughs> with, the, with, with the new strategies, we don't have any kind of problems. Number one, you have to remember that the high frequency ventilator is very effective when the lung is very small. If you go up to 5, 10, or 20 kilograms of body weight of a baby, then this strategy doesn't work well. Mm -hmm. And all of the studies done in adults or bigger babies demonstrated that that strategy is not very effective because of that, of the very large size of the lungs. So when you're using this kind of sensor medics, you have to remember that you don't know exactly how much how large is the tidal volume, the volume that you're using. And of course, you can go very fast reducing the PCO2, but this is not the uh, idea when you're using high-frequency ventilation. The idea is to prevent lung damage of the ventilator. So this new um, generation of ventilators, in this case, Drager, the one we are using, uh, can ventilate any size of uh, neonates. That is the idea that we are using. Of course, the bigger is the baby, the, 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 the 
more difficult to ventilate on a high frequency ventilation. Even with the sensor medics, if you are using this ventilation in babies around 20 kilograms body weight, you have to use three hertz yeah. because the cloud is not transmitted into, into the lung. So, so today but, the, we, we, we move to this new idea to protect yeah, the lung of exactly. babies. So, so one of my friend, uh, he's working in Qatar. He's asking that if we uh, use, he's working in Cedar Hospital, if we use high frequency plus VG in CDH, conventional diaphragmatic hernia, do you have any say on that or do you have any comment? Well, first of all, my better uh, great uh, greetings to the Qatar Cedar Hospital, good friends. Yeah. Well, we use only volume guarantee strategy in all of our babies. Doesn't matter the babies on conventional or in high frequency. You must yeah. remember that the volume guarantee modality put the ventilator in the same strategy that before. But the only thing is that then delta P is going to be modified by the ventilator, but not yeah. by yourself. Mm -hmm. This is the only thing. And many times we have some questions coming from all around the world after, after our studies that sometimes the ventilators are not reaching the tidal volume. Well, the only thing I could, you have to do is to increase delta P. So uh, you have to leave the ventilator to produce this tidal volume that you are setting into the ventilator. And if the baby doesn't, the ventilator doesn't reach mm -hmm. this tidal volume, this is because there is a problem in the lung of the baby or you have to decrease or modify the frequency. So um, uh, congenital diaphragmatic hernia is, uh, is uh, a problem that we used to use um, very, what we call uh, soft ventilation. We use PSB plus volume guarantee in all of the babies trying to keep the baby ventilator spontaneously and producing by their own the volume, the minute volume, but if the compliance is low, then we switch very fast to mm -hmm. the high frequency. All of the babies are on volume guarantee modality. Mm -hmm. All of the babies. Yeah. So uh, with the volume guarantee, high frequency, and the weaning is the same as Dr. Van Kem um, uh, said, or is any uh, thing different? Well, exactly the same. The thing is that, number one, you have to remember that if you put the baby because the baby's lung is uh, having very low compliance. Anytime the lung compliance of the of the baby improves, then PCU2 doesn't remove so so well. Mm -hmm. So when the baby's improving, normally you will see an improvement in the oxygen saturation and not very uh, well uh, ventilation. Then what we try to do is to decrease even more mean repression until the baby reaches around five, mm -hmm. five to seven, then we try to extubate the baby directly from the high frequency. Normally those babies are around or below 30% oxygen uh, FIO2, but we try to keep the frequency exactly the same in very, very high rates. So tidal volume, we don't decrease anymore. The only thing that we do is we decrease the mean repression around Five, the baby is very small, or around seven, if the baby is bigger. Mm -hmm. So the last thing from um, yes, Doctor Jeanette, uh, can I? Yeah, sure. Can I ask just one one question, if we sure, permission? Sure, sure. Go ahead, and then I will ask. Uh, yeah, Doctor Manuel, uh, what would be the uh, most appropriate setting, st starting setting, uh, for high frequency with volume guarantee, say in a one thousand gram baby? Well, this is a fantastic question. Uh, as we published very recently uh, in clinics perinatology, we, we are using around one ml per kilogram of body weight of the tidal volume and around 15 hertz in those babies around 1,000 grams. Then what we try to do is to look at the PCO2 of the baby and the baby is doing well. What the thing is then we decrease even more tidal volume and we compensate increasing the frequency even more. So we try to go to the higher frequency as possible. If we can reach 10 Hertz, then we go to 10 Hertz. So uh, this is the idea to go to the higher rate as possible, decreasing the tidal volume as much as you can. Babies around 1500 grams, we use 1.5. So it's very similar to the body weight. So around 1000 grams, one, one ml per kilogram of the weight, as a starting setting. 
and around 15 hertz. And then we try to increase the frequency and decrease the channel volume as fast as we can. And what would be the pressures and uh, amplitude? Well, amplitude will leave the ventilator to the amplitude. And normally amplitude, uh, working amplitude is around 15 or 20, not more. But we leave the amplitude you know, to the ventilator to modify because you need to, to keep the possibility of the ventilator to go up or less depending on the situation of the circuit and the lung compliance of the baby. So we don't look at the amplitude, we just control, but we need the ventilator to modify the amplitude as uh, it, it is needed. So uh, oh, the last question much. which I am asking, uh, thank you, Dr. Sadat, uh, before Dr. Sadat asked this question that about the troubleshooting. So let's say you started with the volume guarantee, um, I mean, plus uh, high frequency, plus volume guarantee, and the baby is not doing well because of some reason. Okay, so what do you think? You go switch back or increase the volume uh, you are giving more than one ml per kg? Let's say the he's not maintaining the oxygenation. He's requiring higher FiO2 to, to maintain 90 and above. Well, we we think twice before doing anything. And number one, we ask why we put the ventilator, this baby on the ventilator. If the baby is having a low compliance situation, then probably we don't have uh, this uh, functional residual capacity, Richard. And we do this uh, recruitment maneuver looking at delta P. So we switch uh, the middle pressure up and if mm -hmm. the delta P doesn't move, we do not increase anymore the, the middle pressure because probably the lung is over the uh, over distended, even if the oxygen saturation is low. Then we look at the lung ultrasound and we look at the cardiac ultrasound as well. Because sometimes those babies are having another problem, different problem. And of course, we look at the x-ray. So uh, before doing many things in the ventilator, we test delta P, and then we test the lung with the lung ultrasound, and we test the, the heart with the heart ultrasound. Sometimes you will find that something is wrong, not with the ventilator, but probably with the lung of the baby. Mm -hmm. Thank you. OK, so Did that is from uh, Yes, I you can go uh, ahead. Ask a couple of questions before you move to introduce sure. the sheet. No problem. So uh, thank you, Dr. Manuel, and uh, thank you so much for joining a bit ahead of your scheduled time. Uh, just a couple of questions. One is, uh, what is the sedation policy for these babies? And the second question is related to DCO2. I mean, does it have any role in this uh, volume guarantee mode? So this is a very good question. Some years ago, we keep those babies uh, too much sedated. So today we leave uh, the babies on very low morphine drip, um, but we keep the baby awake and breathing spontaneously on high frequency, the baby wants to. As Dr. Van Kamp said, we don't mind the baby's breathing spontaneously. Even more, the baby's on high frequency, we, we put the baby on a skin to skin care with the mother, even during the first few hours of or days during respiratory stress syndrome. And the baby are doing well because we are having the baby on volume guarantee strategy. So when you put the baby, this is very fun. You put the baby on skin to skin uh, and you can see how the ventilator controls and goes up and down delta P, but the uh, uh, volume guarantee modality is kept constant. And, and the second question, excuse me. Uh, the role of DCO2. Oh, the role DCO2, well, what we do is uh, to follow DCO2 after we control the PCO2 of the baby. So we try to do a very uh, first uh, correlation between DCO2 and the PCO2, and then we follow the DCO2. We try to decrease the number of uh, blood gas testing in these babies uh, as much as possible, and we control once a day or twice a day, depending on how sick is the baby. But we follow this DCO2. I think it's a, a very good way to analyze how the lung of the baby is doing at the beginning. The important thing is every single baby has their own DCO2 uh, correlation with the PCO2. And it is important not to compare DCO2 from one baby to another baby because this depends many times in the mechanics uh, condition of uh, the lung and the tubing system. So yes, we follow, but uh, we keep this uh, specific DCO2 for a specific baby individualizing.
Yes, thank you so much. So you titrate it according to the baby. And uh, yeah. Dr. Martin, do you have any questions for Dr. Luna before he leaves? No. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Luna, for joining.